You are listening to the Monitoring and Evaluation Technical Assistance, or MEDA podcast. Improving the collection, management, analysis, and use of data to improve outcomes to refugees in the U.S. Brought to you from the International Rescue Committee with the support of the Office of Refugee Resettlement. MEDA. Welcome to another episode of the MEDA podcast. My name is Meg Gibbon, and I'm the Program Manager for the IRC's Meta Project in Monitoring and Evaluation Technical Assistance. Today we'll be talking about data quality. How can we ensure the best quality when we're collecting data in refugee case management programs? To share their thoughts, three great guests are joining us today. First, Prospero Herrera, IRC's Program Officer for Data Quality Management. Hi, Meg. Next, Abigail clark Sayer, IRC's Program Officer for Information Systems. Hey, Meg. And last, Jennifer Malloy, Program Manager at the Washington State Office of Refugee and Immigrant Assistance. Hello. As you know, the Meta Project works to make sure that the data we're all collecting is used to make programmatic decisions, but we also know that we can't do that if the data we're collecting isn't good quality. So what do we mean when we say quality data? At Meta, we like to talk about data that meets the three C's criteria. First, data that's complete, no blanks, dashes, or missing data. Second, that it's correct, accurately reflecting the reality of our programs. And third, that it's consistent with what's expected. For instance, not seeing the exact same numbers overly frequently or preferential end digits, like all numbers ending in a zero or five. Quality data is also relevant. It has a purpose and is the right data to collect, whether for reporting or making programmatic decisions that lead to actions. If you could each share one key tip for ensuring data quality that you'd like refugee service providers to take away, if we did nothing else, what is the one thing that you would recommend we do to improve our data quality? Yeah, I think it really starts with the data collection tools that you're using, um, whether it's a, you know, robust database that you're able to customize, or if it's a paper form, or if it's an Excel spreadsheet somewhere in between. I think it's really important to design tools that are both comprehensive in terms of what they're capturing, that they capture all the things that you need to capture and nothing more. Um, There's no reason to capture that nice to have data all the time. I get requests for things that are nice to have, but then when it comes right down to it, that's not actually the stuff that we really need adding, you know, extra questions. Every single extra question is an additional burden on that data entry staff. So really, you know, restricting your data collection tools to only the things that you really need. I think that's one one important piece when it comes to designing those tools. Again, whether it's a database or a spreadsheet or a paper form. The other, I think, really is to make sure that those tools are multifunctional. That's one of the ways that caseworkers and other, you know, direct service staff can really see the value in those tools. Uh, For example, the database that we use, the primary um, space where we're capturing case notes, it's not just a place that is capturing that narrative case note you know, story of client service, but it's also a place where we're able to get, you know, a unique count of the numbers of activities and services that are being completed. So we've designed it in such a way that by recording a case note, you're really killing two birds with one stone. You're documenting that narrative story, but you're also contributing to a sum total of of inputs that we can, you know, look at down the road to get that aggregate amount. I think, you know, the more multifunctional tools are, uh, the more, you know, the staff that are using them uh, will be motivated to use them. If they see them purely as tools for compliance, we find that that's not particularly motivating. They have to be seen as uh, resources that they can go back to for information on their own case or on cases that they're working on as a team. I would say um, just going back to the capacity of the caseworker, you know, it's it's really important that the caseworker and um, his or her uh, manager are able to work together to just kind of understand what type of work we that they're having and the amount of time that can be dedicated towards entering case notes. Perhaps uh, suggesting to, if you're a caseworker, suggesting to your manager, 
you know, if there's a, a day or a block of a day that you can dedicate towards data entry, that really helps get around, you know, being interrupted um, every now and then for other things. Um, and it really allows you to have a period of uninterrupted time to enter the data. I think it's also important for managers to constantly review the data with their direct reports. It's good to have not just one eye on it, but uh, multiple eyes. So really having you know, someone that manages you or a colleague to look over the data with you um, is also helpful. One of the challenges for caseworkers, case managers, is really prioritizing what they can and can't do because our client needs could take up far more than a full-time job requires. So knowing that you do have to carve out a portion of your time, I think is critical, but is also a tough thing for many people to accept. You want me to stop, you know, when this person has this urgent need and set aside four hours a week to do the data, that means I can't help this many people with this many needs. That's a challenge, but I think it's such a, a critical piece of the, the caseworker's job is to really be able to tell the story of what they're doing. And I think oftentimes with our direct service staff, we just tell them you have to take this data and perhaps not show them how it's being used to tell the story at a state level, at a federal level. We use this data when the Washington State Legislature is in session to tell them about the needs of our refugee clients. So I think tying the need for the data to what the ultimate result is, is perhaps additional funding for our, our programs. Fantastic. Thank you all so much for your contributions today. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you listeners as well for joining us today. This has been an excerpt from Meta's Data Quality Podcast. To listen to the full podcast, visit metasupport.org or search Meta Monitoring on iTunes.